Turning to topic number three, diagnosis. Certainly the medical history is important, particularly focusing on the risk factors in the last three months, i.e., was there any airline travel, long distance travel, hospital stay, major trauma in the last three months? Is the patient on um, estrogens, on contraceptives, uh, on the uh, contraceptive ring, etc.? Examining the patient certainly is important, but as we said earlier, symptoms and findings can be quite subtle so that the examination may not be all that impressive. But if one has a suspicion for a DVT, an imaging study is needed, and this is classically a Doppler ultrasound, also called duplex, uh, which is the ultrasound study of the leg with compression um, where a clot can be demonstrated. Certainly one could do a CT or MRI, uh, but this is classically not done because it's more cumbersome, takes longer, not widely available, and more costly. And if you've had a DVT or people have looked uh, for a DVT, you know this image. Uh, here's a blood vessel. Um, the black area means there's clot, there's no flow. The colors means there is blood flow. And the ultrasonographer will then draw into an image how extensive the clot is so that the clinician knows that it's just a small distal DVT, i.e. one below the knee, which are typically not that dangerous. They typically require only three months of anticoagulation, um, in general speaking, whereas the bigger ones, the proximal ones in the thigh, have a higher rate of breaking off, causing PE, and causing long-term problems. Now, sometimes you will hear about the use of the D-dimer, um, and in the acute setting, when somebody has leg symptoms or symptoms of PE, um, the D-dimer can be helpful if there's really a low suspicion for a DVT, i.e., the patient doesn't really have any risk factors for DVT, has some leg symptoms that are unimpressive. If a D-dimer is negative, then a DVT is unlikely. But if the patient has clear risk factors for DVT, one should not bother with a D-dimer but go straight for a Doppler ultrasound. There are many D-dimers on the market, some more sensitive and useful, others less sensitive and less useful. The diagnosis of PE, again, the medical history is key, focusing on the risk factors in the last three months, as discussed. The examination can be uh, a little helpful that the patient may have some uh, oxygen uh, desaturation, i.e., we put a pulse oximeter on the finger and the oxygen goes down, but often the examination is not helpful and um, does not really give any clues. But if we have a suspicion for PE, an imaging study again is needed. And this is nowadays typically a CT of the chest called a CTA or a PE protocol, a chest CT scan, uh, which would show a PE. Now sometimes a nuclear medicine lung scan is done. That's called a VQ scan. That used to be the test of choice uh, up until about 10 years ago. Still a very good test but more cumbersome to do than the CT of the chest. Um, important to know is that the chest x-ray, a plain chest x-ray, is not helpful. It typically does not show up in PE, um, unless there's some lung damage due to the PE. But in most PE patients, a chest x-ray is normal. And I think it's easy to see, and uh, some of you may well have experienced that it's not that uncommon, unfortunately, that a diagnosis gets missed or delayed because the symptoms can be so, uh, so vague, so mild, so similar to other medical problems that are more common, the Charlie horse, a muscle cramp, a muscle tear, a sprained ankle. And the physician may see a patient and may think it's one of these benign disorders and miss a DVT. So the suspicion in the patient as well as the healthcare provider uh, and the inquiry about the risk factors is really key to come up with a plan who should get a Doppler ultrasound and not. Um, the advice may be given wrongly to just rest and take it easy, take some Motrin, uh, see me back if the symptoms have not gone away in a week, and if the patient truly has a DVT, this can be detrimental because the PE may happen in the next uh, week, and uh, in the worst outcome, the patient may die from the PE. PE is often also misdiagnosed. Uh, it's similar, and therefore patients may be said to have a touch of pneumonia, some bronchitis. They may get some antibiotics. They may be said to have musculoskeletal problems. Maybe 
somebody says, oh, you have a touch of asthma, get, get some steroids, some asthma inhalers, um, and in true uh, life, the patient really has a PE that's missed. Antibiotics, Motrin, see me back in a week if it doesn't get better, better are comments that unfortunately are sometimes said and would not be appropriate in this situation.